Hello, hello, hello everyone. Hello. Hello, hello Anna. Hello, hello. Irania. Hi. hi. And hi guys and welcome to the episode of the Empower Journey. This community to support your self-growth and live by your own rules. Uh, so this month we are in August and the, and the theme of the month is how good are you at love? Tips to embrace unconditional love. And mm. as usual, we have the perfect, oh. the perfect guest. We're very modest. <laughs> we have the best guest. <laughs> and uh, it's such a joy to welcome Ellen Irania Sangman. Uh, Irania among friends. Hi, Irania. Hi. <laughs> so Irania, to tell you a little bit more about her before she introduced herself, is a humility and relationship coach, meditation teacher, and you also recently did a TED talk, TEDx talk in Edinburgh uh, on feminity, and that this is going to be out very, very soon. So, Irania, can you tell us more about yourself? Tell us about your empowerment journey. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess it's uh, hard to know where to start, really. I mean, I find that life is your biggest teacher, so everything in life is sort of gets you where you are now, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Um, but, well, I uh, grew up in Norway, um, in a big family. I have uh, five brothers and sisters, so we're six all together, um, which was both good and bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, I grew up, I guess, in a sort of quite feminist culture, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, Norway in the 70s, Scandinavia in the 70s, pretty pretty um, feministic environment. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, definitely quite uh, up there on the barricades, sort of uh, identifying quite strongly with that. Um, and um, yeah, then I got into music, which was my passion. Um, mm -hmm. Worked as a musician in uh, the opera orchestra in Oslo for several years and then I was just so fascinated by opera that I wanted to stage it, you know, I really wanted to be directing it. So I, I, I went to Sweden, to Stockholm and studied that and started uh, working as, a, um, as an opera director. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I was head headhunted for a job as um, the head of the Opera Academy in Oslo, in Norway. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was all looking very good. Yeah. <laughs> and at, at the, parallelly to this, uh, when I sort of quit my musician job uh, in Oslo and went for the directing, then I also uh, started on my spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of things that happened. Um, I experienced a divorce. I took my, my three-year-old boy to a different country. And at the same time, I encountered these mysterious monks who, you know, uh, I joined on the spiritual path with. So it was, it was a time of very great growth for me in many ways. Um, and um, yeah, all these things happened. And then I thought I was like, really had grown quite a lot, right? And gotten to a really good place. Mm -hmm. But then I was just really hit again. Uh, mm -hmm. When I had this top job at that at the Opera Academy, I just suddenly just met the wall. I was completely burned out. Uh, yeah. The degree that you know, I was in bed for three months, and just even the thought of lifting my arms was a struggle. You know, that was really oh. bad. And from then, yeah. it's been um, a slow recovery from that. And but it's been really beautiful, I must say, mm. because. I can't think of anything that would have taught me more than actually being mm. stopped in my tracks like that. Mm. Uh, because otherwise I would have just been able to continue with, mm. with a stressful lifestyle and, you know, mm. and the lack of self-love that I had but didn't know about. Mm. So mm. I really had to stop and look at my life and change things around again mm. and find out what really, uh, you know, really how can I protect my peace uh, and, you know, live by my own rules. I like that, uh, that, <laughs> that slogan of yours. That's really good. 
Yeah, and so I felt like I really started started over again in some ways. And luckily I had my meditation tools, you know, so I, I knew how to, I could, you know, center myself. Mm. Um, but it's also been a journey of really deciding what's important for me, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I suffered from what I think a lot of women do, like wanting to be so perfect at everything. Yeah. Uh, you know? oh, <laughs> <laughs> you recognize that, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I, I was one of those who had like so high standards for myself in mm. every area. You know, it's cool to have high standards, but if you have high standards in every area of your life, mm. it's just not sustainable, mm. you know? And yeah. I was just running around trying to please everyone and to please myself and my high standards in, in every possible way. And I just realized that I have to let something go here, you know? Mm. I have to be able to ask for help I have to be able to not be perfect and to love myself anyways and um, to receive you know <laughs> so so that was uh, and has been very big for me um, and then also I feel also very lucky because my life is magical in the way that very good things come to me like really a uh, golden stuff you know like the meditation is one of them just like i believe it's like the best thing ever you know i, I really believe really, it's the best meditation i don't know i haven't tried every other meditation but I can't, <laughs> like <laughs> it's very very effective at least for me mm. uh, and then i stumbled across this um body work uh, for musicians that i also work with which is like it's called timani and it's really very very great stuff cutting edge and then I stumbled across information about the masculine and the feminine and relationships that was also like wow and that was a new turning point in my life Mm. when I discovered that basically I'd been doing a lot of stuff wrong in my relationship and I had a good relationship my marriage was 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 good Mm. but Mm. there's some areas in our relationship where we really just didn't understand each other we just didn't meet and there was always the same conflicts over and over again and yeah it was just sort of areas of our life that we didn't touch in a way it just like it was just difficult and um and i i started learning about that there's differences between men and women you know and i learned yeah. how men work and i started applying this um it was really quite transformational you know it was so amazing to see primarily actually the way he responded you know and how Mm. much happier he became in our relationship and uh, Mm. of course me too because I'm now much more able to actually get what I want in the relationship Mm. you know I know how to do that and that's great help Mm. that's amazing (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> it's shortly like uh, where I am today I guess you know mm-hmm. 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 so now I obviously work with with that stuff too you know communication between the masculine and the feminine and the balance inside of you too between the masculine mm-hmm. and the feminine, something mm-hmm. that really interests me a great deal mm-hmm. yeah that's amazing that's uh, that's also very connected to um, our choice of the name of the podcast which is a power mm-hmm. with a, with an H, not uh, not Sorry. limited to to women, uh, but to connect to uh, to this idea of these two energies inside everyone. That I really I really believe that mm. too. Feminine yeah. and masculine. There isn't such a thing as only masculine or only feminine. Yeah. Oh, the, the 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 interesting thing about that is that, that doesn't really work. It becomes very one dimensional. It's supposed right. to be. A balance you know both in yeah. relationships and within yourself and, and in society as well mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. True. We we are, we're sort mm-hmm. of experiencing some imbalance you know um mm-hmm. in different areas mm-hmm. but I, what i love yeah. about your what you describe in your, in your story is those it seems to be those gifts coming to you and and being offered to you in in your journey while also the burnout being one of them uh, which, which is a beautiful way to to see life, a beautiful you know different perspective, um, which is uh, which is very very empowering as well. It's like okay, 
is that actually was that a gift from you know happening for me you know in mm. the universe giving me an opportunity for growth uh, or yeah. am I going to be a victim so that really uh, mm. uh, amazing in your in your story mm. yeah yeah and I, I really really think that it works like that that is totally my experience you know mm. Mm. um and the sooner you get into a space where you can actually see it that way, why is this happening for mm. me? What is it for? What is it in this for me? Mm. Uh, the, the easier it gets, really, because if you're going to fight mm. everything that happens to you, and then yeah. just the learning process just takes longer. That's right. Mm. That's right. And the resistance uh, for me, it was a, a stroke uh, about about 10, 12, 15 years ago. I had a stroke. And looking back, it's like such a gift in so in so many ways, although it was also very challenging, of course, but it really helped to um, just start over again. It really feels like uh, having to have to have been a phoenix, but in such a beautiful transformational way. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's <laughs> The path of healing and self-love yeah. is so transformative when we want to, to see it that way. That's really true. Oh, yeah. I'm curious, can you tell us more about why there is usually conflicts and tensions in relationships? It can be with men, as you were saying, or even in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, conflicts between men and women are quite famous, aren't they? <laughs> Some even describe it as a battle between the sexes. Mm -hmm. um, which I believe basically comes mostly from misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. We just don't get each other. We don't know what's going on with the other people, uh, the other gender, uh, but we do often think we do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that, yeah. that if we knew that we didn't know, then at least we would sort of have a certain curiosity and a certain humility and respect. But we often mm -hmm. go in not, not having a clue about the others, but we think we do. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason we do that is because we, we judge people from, from ourselves, how we would be, yeah. you know, how I would react, yeah. how I would act in this situation. So yeah. if I did that, that would mean this, this, and that, you know? And so mm. often we judge women, we judge men because of that, because, you know, he is ignoring me. That means he doesn't respect me, he doesn't care about me, he's lazy or whatever, you know, it means all these mm. things. If I did that, then it would mean that. Yeah. Mm. What we don't get is that we operate so differently, our brains work so differently that it just mm. doesn't mean the same thing. Mm. It comes from a completely different place. So that's one of the really major things yeah. I think mm -hmm. everybody needs to start doing is to be more curious, you know? So mm. what if there's something that I don't get here, you know? What, what if there's a different reason than my initial reaction, my initial sort of, you know, dislike of this? Mm. What if there's something else going on here and be more curious and actually investigate more? And of course, mm. uh, try to learn a little bit about how things actually are mm. uh, and, and um, one of the things that I think uh, quite a few women struggle with, it seems, um, when I talk to them is um, they're not really ready to change themselves because they think that he should change. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, was, I was thinking that hearing you talking, like, like it's so often we're like, there's something wrong with the, the other person's behavior. And yeah. mm -hmm. is, is it a way, would you say, to avoid the responsibility that we play in, uh, in, in, you know, in part of relationship, or is it more just ignorance? Uh, that's a very good question. I think it's probably coming from disappointment and hurt, right. primarily. Mm. You know, you're so disappointed with the other person. You feel you, know, you don't get what you want. You don't feel loved. You know, you don't feel support. Mm. You feel like, like and, and it feels justified to you. You yes. know, when, you know, when somebody, when you feel like you give so much and you don't get anything in return, yes. then you get bitter and you feel like it's the other person's problem, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And very true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what, what, what we often don't know is that there are things that I'm doing that's creating this, you know? Mm -hmm. 
uh, and but when you don't know that then you are sort of sitting in this position where well I've been trying all these things I'm the one who's been trying to save this relationship and doing the right thing and everything and he just doesn't want to do he needs to change mm -hmm. uh, and I get that you know because it seems yeah. very real it seems absolutely true <laughs> in many ways you know um, but if you sort of scrape the surface a little bit it's not it's very often yeah. not Mm. There, not like mm -hmm. that. that's that's really really interesting so mm -hmm. going back to to the example that you were giving like let's say um the the, the woman feels ignored uh, or there's a situation where uh the, the man is actually ignoring the woman mm. uh, and there's this feeling maybe of rejection for the woman and for the impression of not being respected etc if mm. we if we take the perspective of the men uh, could you give yeah. us maybe some examples of what reasons there mm. could be for 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 the behaviors if that's all right <laughs> yeah i'd love to <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one of the things that we really all need to know about is the basic differences in in how we use our brains as yeah. feminine and masculine people and i'm saying feminine masculine because it's not always gender specific okay yeah. so it can be but it, generally, women tend to be more in the feminine uh, and vice versa. But for the masculine way of using your brain, uh, the attention goes to one thing at the time. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of mm -hmm. locking on. It's very focused. Right? Okay. It has a one-pointed focus that it stays on, which is great for very many things. It's great for work often. You know, mm -hmm. you don't get distracted very easily because you have the ability to lock on and so it's very sort of satisfying to be in that mode and to do what you have committed to doing right it's a committed state where you are hunting for a result one could say um, and that's all well and good but the downside of it is that it's hard to refocus it takes a lot of mental energy and effort to actually mm. like I, I you know, it's like a tank ship. It's going this way, and it has a lot of that mm. momentum. It is going, you know. And if you wanted to to change direction, it's got to take yeah. quite a long time, <laughs> you know, before it then can go back again. And so that means that the male or masculine brain doesn't really want to do that, so it filters out. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah, because it, it's much more comfortable to be um, effective. You know, let's yeah. say men are more like hunters biologically. Then they're hunting for, for one thing. They can't just look at everything else. They can't mm. look at everything else. They actually have to be focused on where that animal is going, right? That otherwise, mm. they're going to lose track and they're going to lose all this energy for nothing. So they're not going to do that. So when you then, let's say the man's focused on something. He's on the computer or whatever. And by the way, men are always almost always focused on something. Even when they went into the room, maybe they're focused on getting something from the fridge because they're hungry, you know? Mm -hmm. so that's their one point of focus. <laughs> it's hard to, to understand, but it actually <laughs> is kind of like that. And then we come in, women who have uh, the ability to be aware of everything in the room. Mm -hmm. It's not even just I have the ability, that's what we do, you know? That's what we do. We enter a room and we immediately know very much about it. We know where things are. We know the general feel of it. We know when there's something that's wrong, uh, something is hanging squint or there's some trash on the, somewhere, or we know or even the emotional state of people in the room. And this is yeah. happening like, like that. We don't try, you know, uh, but if we try not to, it's hard. So, so that's yeah. where we come from. And we also have we're sort of very flexible. So we can go from focusing one thing to another thing very quickly. You know, mm. we can turn around very quickly. Mm. Um, but for, so it's hard for us to understand that when we come in and try to enter mm. the tank ship, <laughs> you know, with something, um, they might just filter it out. Yeah. Not intentionally, it's just because it's just, mm. they're so there and it would take so much mental effort to go out that they will probably just say, uh huh, mm -hmm. you know, mm. <laughs> I'm sure you've experienced that, you know, they say, yeah, yeah, but they don't really actually yeah. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. very annoying, you know? Because if we did that, it would just mean, I don't care about you, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't think what you're coming with is important, but it doesn't mean that. It just means that it's, it's hard for mm -hmm. me to, to do this. It's gonna cost me so much that my brain would rather not. Mm -hmm. so, so that's the thing. And so what we need to learn then is that we need to either some, you can't enter this state with a very sort of quick yes or no question. Like, you know, like, uh, um, are, you, are, uh, are you staying for dinner? You know, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. you, you say yes or no, that, that, you know, that doesn't take too much. But if it's like, I need to talk mm. about something and you have yeah, the mm. full attention, that doesn't work. Then you actually have to, find out when it works, you know? And that's one mm. of the primary uh, reasons why often communication doesn't work is because we try to have a meaningful conversation without having mm. the attention. You know, mm. we haven't actually mm. sure we have the attention. Mm. So okay. that's one of the things that we really need to, need to do. And then when that's done and the man gives you the full attention, then, you know, it's a completely different deal. Mm. Yeah, and that's mm. going to be more, much more rewarding and fulfilling as an experience. Um, totally. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So interesting. interesting. Reminds mm. me of, um, of um, men being quite uh, bothered by being interrupting, interrupted, sorry, about you, when they're doing something mm. and interrupted, like, yeah. oh, could you do that now? No, no, I can't. I mean, I'm busy. Yeah, yeah. I'm. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. Because it just takes so much effort. And also, <laughs> I find that men often feel a sort of immediacy about things. Like we have ideas, we come in, oh, that needs to be done or whatever. And my husband was like, but I can't do that now. Mm. I'd be like, well, I didn't mean now. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just meant, you know, oh, we should do that one day. <laughs> you know? yeah. 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 About a plan or holidays or, yeah, yeah, yeah. That really resonates. Yeah. It really resonates with me. Yeah. You go around the house, you say, oh, we should really hang something up there, whatever. And they're just like, oh, panic. Mm -hmm. but I can't, you know, oh, like, <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I can't do that now. Or don't, you don't have that now. You know? <gasps> so, it seems yeah. also like, a, like a great quality to, to be actually very, very, you know, one pointed focused instead of being, being maybe mm. multitasking. Mm -hmm. And would you say that the, um, the awareness aspect is more, we were saying maybe the hunters uh, more towards the uh, instinct, to, instinct of men possibly. And are we more like gatherers and looking at all the berries and the bushes and potentially this plant and the other, would that, would that work? Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> totally. Uh, so a lot of people uh, out there now using those sort of images. Uh, and I think they, they work really well. They seem to explain a lot of behavior even though mm -hmm. it's not, you know, proven scientifically that this is how it works, it seems yep. to be something that we resonate with and that makes sense. You know, it does make mm. sense that that the females are the ones that are gathering and, and, and need to be able to be aware of many things at the same time. Yeah. You know, we have maybe responsibility for children at different ages, you know, running around and uh, we have, you know, a much bigger overview over everything that's happening because we need to, or we need it. Mm. It was really, you know, necessary. Yeah. And mm. so, so yeah, I, I use gatherer. I think that's explains a lot. Mm. Um, <laughs> mm. Yeah, you know, it, even the, even the fact that we are so into detail. Yes. Like the feminine is much more into detail in general and noticing detail, even detail about faces and, uh, intonation and this is the social bonding is is that's actually mm. proven that the feminine brain is much more developed in that area mm. so just mm. they have more brain capacity for that because we needed to you know it, we can't fend it for ourselves with power so we need to bond we need to relate in that kind of way you know have mm. relations that make sure we're safe and effective mm -hmm. mm. wonderful and, and we yes. yeah sorry that's no, okay. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering. So this ability, imagining the ability of a woman being in a room and being aware of potentially the emotional state of most people in the room, can that be also a bit overwhelming and, and a bit like, you know, I'm feeling all, all this. What do I do with them, with all that? Yeah, well, 
I suppose so. I think women are different in that respect. And I think um, not only women, but people are very different in their sensitivity. And some people find it hard to not take other people's energies on and that mm. kind of thing. And mm -hmm. other people don't have that so much. So I suppose it can be overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. But um, in my experience, often emotions are more overwhelming for men, like yeah. other emotions when they get them in their face, because, yeah. it's, because it's often surprising for them because they don't pick up yeah. the, the, the small clues. Mm. So yeah, what's going on, and then yeah. all of a sudden it's, it's exploding in their face and it's very yeah. massive and uh, they feel blamed often and often they are blamed too, if you're honest here. <laughs> 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 which does not help and uh, mm -hmm. I just don't know to, how to cope with it you know how, how mm -hmm. to cope with a very highly emotional person that's so nice. that's yeah. another thing that where we sort of often are very different yeah mm. Mm. yeah um, can, can you talk a bit more about the both sides in ourselves like in one person the feminine part and the masculine part mm -hmm. can we use both can we choose to use both like yeah yeah um obviously we, we as, as we have said already we have both the masculine and the feminine and uh, mm. which is very necessary i think and you know without the ability to focus what do we do we we <laughs> we have that ability too you know? <laughs> yeah it's generally costs us more i would say to be in a mm. in that kind of focus yeah. state for a very long time if we have to sort of stay there and sort of mm. Uh, then we would start using more stress hormones to sort of be there. It, it, it's it, it, it's more effortful for us to cut everything out, right? Because we naturally mm -hmm. would would sort of be distracted in a way, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So, but we can, we can, and and we're very flexible. And men obviously also can be in a more flow state, you know, a more feminine mm -hmm. state. Um, be more playful they're not always all about work you know they also can have this playfulness and uh, the ability to nurture as well you know mm -hmm. so uh, and and to communicate and all these things so I think within let's say me my predominant would be feminine and what I sort mm -hmm. of thrive with would be to be in a flow state where I don't mm. commit so strongly to one thing at a time but I'm more going from one thing to the other mm. you know, um, there's not so much a time limit to what I do uh, I mm. can feel creative um, you know and in my body and not so much in my head that would be my sort of favorite state of being and, and a feminine you know, so I'm mm. sure I am there much more than I used to be because I didn't know <laughs> that that actually was something that would nurture me. But I also enjoy um, being committed and, you know, being mm. sort of focused sometimes and getting stuff done and, uh, and also to really be boundary. I, I, my experience is that you need a bit of the sort of masculine in yourself to actually put some, down some boundaries mm -hmm. and not just float out completely yeah. you know mm. so i would i would put that in the, in the category of your own masculine um okay ability and the drive mm. the ambition as well you know is kind of your yeah. inner masculine that sort of drives that i would say you know mm. i'm sure mm -hmm. people would say yeah. other things but if you want to sort of discuss on the level of having both mm. of internally, I would say that that's, yeah. It's like, you know, oh, yeah. the mm. feminine is the one that receives, you know? Yeah. And mm. the masculine, it, it, what, what gives and, and does. I can yeah. mm. mm. So the idea would not be to be balanced. It would be to, I have a goal, so I take the masculine energy and now I need to rest and I'll take the, the feminine energy, something like that. Mm, yeah, yeah, I think so. And I, I don't know how it is in France, but in Scandinavia, a lot of women, maybe because of the women's lib and you know how far we mm. are in, the, in that area, a lot of women are taking on quite a lot of masculine behavior and mm. uh, they stay in the masculine mode very, a lot of the time. And so they forget about how they can relax, mm. they forget mm. about how they can receive. 
Yeah. So yeah. it's hard for the men to come in and actually yeah. offer something of value to them, which is very frustrating and a, a big uh, turn off and a big problem in many relationships that the men mm. don't have, they don't have feel important anymore. They don't feel like they can actually give what, and they are givers naturally. They want to give, you know, uh, but if women are so like used to just spending for themselves all the time, they don't know. Yeah, independent. Yeah, yeah, yeah mm. it's fine. You know, I love being independent, but in a relationship, mm. you have to be able to receive. Mm. Uh, you know, and soften. Otherwise, it's going to be very frustrating, and you're getting burned out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, as you say, if it's not your, if it's counterintuitive or not natural, and you're staying in the masculine. You're gonna you're gonna get into burnout. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Would would you say that it's um I'm curious about the distinction between feminism you that you mentioned that might have been maybe uh, the environment you you were brought up in and mm. femininity. Uh, is is feminism too much of masculine energy and not enough of the balance? Is is it is it connected to that or is it a little bit different? Would you say? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that parts of femininity, no, feminism mm-hmm. is not that. Mm-hmm. I don't think all of it is. I mean, there's a new sort of trend now that's more like feminine power, which I like better. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and also within feminism, I, I'm not against feminism. Uh, mm-hmm. I think feminism has been and is very important. What I don't like is the tendency to think that we need to be masculine to be worth the same as men. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's a, a, a very big trap and um, shooting ourselves in the foot in a way, you know, that so much effort is going into the, the right to be like men. Mm-hmm. Uh, because That's where the status is. That's where the power is at the moment. But we need to actually look at, can we get more status and more power uh, to the feminine, to what's actually natural for women? Mm. instead of always you know going out into the masculine domain which mm. of course we also need to be able to do if we want to mm. just as men should be able to go into the feminine and, and be respected for yeah. that if they want yeah. you know so mm-hmm. for me it's more a balance of of what the worth and value we give to the masculine and feminine mm. and mm. I see that because the masculine traditionally has all the power has all the status yeah. we all want to go up there you know, and we lose, we really lose because we cannot be as good as being men as men are. And why should we, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. why should we? Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know if that explained it, but uh, femininity for me is, is an energy, it's a way of being. Um, mm-hmm. And feminism is of course more about women's rights. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and it's important for sure, but I think, uh, a part of women's rights should be the right to be feminine and be respected for that, you know, and mm. and be seen as valuable, you know, and do feminine choices like raising children and, and nurturing and that kind of stuff, and it's having more status, really, you know, better pay and all that stuff, you know, but also in the way we look at ourselves and what is really important. Mm-hmm. No, not everyone in the world can be a leader of a bank or, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is, that yeah. the, is that the only thing that counts? Mm. Yeah, mm. that's absolutely fine. For me, there's this notion as well, sometimes, I guess, like in everything taken to certain extremes, it can become quite violent, it can become quite a, a struggle, a, a fight, mm. uh, which I always find, mm, this, mm. Is, this is going too far in... In, in, in becoming violent why mm. what i'm hearing as well is in your in your perception is is to bring softness and that's something that i think you really you really embody for me i think there's so much mm. softness um and this may be what i recognize in your femininity that that the, mm. the world needs i think it would really balance things in so in so many ways mm. Mm. So yeah, thank you. Yes, and I totally, totally agree. I mean, the world really needs more of the feminine values of connection and community and nourishing, uh, you know, it really does. Uh, there's a lot of sort of ambition and fighting. And I think it's a shame that, that feminism has brought 
fuel to that fight mm. between the sexes. You know, I really think that that's a mistake. We cannot mm. live happy on this planet without men and without get, having good relationships with men. And men are amazing beings, most of them, and they are so willing to serve and help, but we cannot fight them. They're not going to protect and give to us if we fight them all the time. You know, that's just not going to happen. It doesn't work like that. So we need to really stop being on the war path like that and being aggressive and blaming men for everything. You know, it's it's not right. It's uh, the most of the men I know, and I don't know about you ladies, but most of the men I know are really nice guys. Mm. I don't, <laughs> you know, they mean well. Yes, we have misunderstandings or whatever. And yes, of course they are, you know, some male chauvinists out there, but I don't really know anybody personally who is like that. The majority mm. of men really want to support and really want it to work. Mm. And if we are always gonna like look at men the same way as, you know, chauvinistic idiots, we're not gonna get anywhere. Yeah. It's not working. Yeah, it's not fair either, you know. And you know, most of us also want to be in a relationship with a man, don't we? Like <laughs> 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 <So, laughs> so the enemy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so where where do we start if you know if people listening to us are, are, are wondering? Okay, so how can I start? I'm really like sort of at the, this beginners level. How can, how do we build those true partnerships? true friendships, true collaborations at work, in family circles, with your loved ones, with your, uh, with your spouse or, or partner, what would you say? How would you, how would you advise people to start on this journey? <laughs> well, it's a big question, isn't it? Mm. Um, but actually, I do believe that any great relationship starts with a good relationship with yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, you're always going to project your own stuff on, uh, onto the other, you know, in the relationships. Uh, so it's really important to take care of yourself in that way and to make sure you do the job that's necessary to get yourself in a, in a good space. Mm-hmm. Um, to be willing to be vulnerable like that, I think is absolutely uh, yeah. really very important. And to yeah. take responsibility for your own stuff, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's basically where you need to start, you need Mm -hmm. to take responsibility. Mm -mm. And in some ways, I think, you know, that's what I did when I learned this stuff about femininity and masculinity and how I could act differently, you know, and I realized that I haven't been supporting my husband in many ways to be the man that he wants to be and that I want him to be. Uh, So I had to take responsibility for that and realize that I have things to learn here. I don't know best. You know, mm. I thought I knew best in a lot of ways, and um, but I realized mm. I don't. I have to be mm. curious. I have to be humble here and actually, you know, mm. do things differently mm. because, mm. you know, I have a part in, in what's not working and I might as well do my part. Um, and that's the good news because in my experience is that when I did my part, then it solved so many things. Wow. It was like when one starts, the other one just follows. And uh, the biggest mistake you can do is to sort of wait for the other one to start changing things mm-hmm. because yes. it's right or because you're mad or because it's his turn or, you know, uh, because you're not going to get what you want from there. Mm-hmm. So I think really to be owning your own stuff and, and be humble mm-hmm. um, and willing to change, I think yeah. it's the primary thing mm. Mm. I love this idea of a, of exploring uh, maybe looking at your own masculine and feminine inside of you how things um, mm. how, how it plays in for you because as you say uh, it's all it's different for everyone isn't it we all have those two aspects and uh, and there are things we can we can become more aware of and it's, it's a great place to start and then exploring mm-hmm. with the other, being curious, not because uh, yeah, there's yeah. this aspect of projection, like like we're sure it's this labeling and projecting and judging, isn't it? That mm-hmm. actually maintain us in mm-hmm. in whatever situation we we want to change. So, yeah. Yes, you know what? And if you don't, if you're not happy in your relationship, 
it might be that you're doing something wrong mm -hmm. or that's something you can change yeah. and not always just put it on the other person that the other person is wrong for me or the other person doesn't do mm. what he needs to do you know mm. to actually see what if this is a response to what i'm doing mm. you know and if i change things i get a different result mm. that was definitely my experience i started getting different results you know mm. by changing changing little things my attitude uh, primarily but also uh, how I was speaking, how I was respecting the, the masculine way of being, understanding what was emasculating mm. and uh, mm. what would actually make him stronger. Mm. Uh, and also realizing that I need him to be strong. If mm. I'm going to be strong, he needs to be strong and not subtly have this little fight against your partner, you know, mm. that I certainly did sometimes. And I think it's quite common that I meet women who are afraid of making the man strong because they, it's like an instinct, it's like a fear. The masculine can be mm. quite intimidating. Mm. You know, a, a strong masculine man can be intimidating and you, you feel like you need to sort of uh, diminish it in a way. Mm. To mm. protect uh, him, uh, possibly. Or... Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, to not sort of pumping up, not making him feel strong. You know, it's, mm. it's, I see that, that women often do that when they are insecure, when they don't feel safe in themselves, mm -hmm. which is the worst thing you can do if you want to feel safe with a man. Because for a man to protect you, you need to stop fighting him. You cannot make him weak, because mm -hmm. that's gonna just make him angry mm -hmm. or, or frustrated. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want a man to be uh, protective and providing for you, then you need to actually make him feel strong. You know, as a happy, strong man is the best protector you can have. An unhappy man who is being undermined by you will not protect you. Mm -hmm. He can't. He has to fight against you. He has to protect himself from you. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. so, but, but a lot of women don't realize that. Mm -hmm. You know? Because we, we, we don't dislike the idea of a strong man. In some ways we want it. But mm. when it comes to like this man and my relationship with him, then I'm afraid of actually him being really strong. So it, it takes a bit of a gulp and a bit of understanding that he will be much more safe to be with if he feels strong and happy. Yeah. And if you are the one who makes him feel strong and happy, he'll never leave you. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. That's really what he needs. So. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell us more well, about your... Speaking about that, oh, I sorry. thought it was something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so what do we need to feel for him? Like if we want a, a strong and happy man. Yeah. How he should make us feel. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want uh, a strong and happy man, then there's several things that you uh, need to do and several mm -hmm. things you, don't, you shouldn't do. So I'll list a few of them. Right. Um, your pen and paper. One of the biggest things is to actually start listening mm -hmm. um, and to take in what he says and realize that men are really excellent problems problem solvers and you don't always know best mm -hmm. so so if you and also if you ask a man about advice then listen and believe what he says you know it's actually I mean I, I speak from experience here because I I just thought I knew it all you know and I was really mm -hmm. quite surprised when I started to more listen and 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 the way to listen is to really give him time and attention and interrupt all the time, but actually give him a lot of time to come with, mm. with what he has and to respect what he says. You don't have to do what he says, you know, but um, mm. if you don't, then uh, you have to have a good reason why not to in a way. If you ask mm. advice, then, um, you know, if you get it, then you should respect that advice, I think. Mm. Uh, you could, of course, say, like, what would you do? Or something like that. And yeah. if you say, "What do you think I should yeah. do?" Then, mm. yeah, then don't disregard it. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one of 
are the things that like really be listened to and is very valuable for a man and also to receive what he has to give. Mm-hmm. It sounds easy, right? It sounds like, mm-hmm. yeah, I want to receive, just give it to me, but it's not always so easy, mm-hmm. you know, because it, it, it means that you have to let go of your micromanaging and your mm-hmm. control and you need to actually just let yourself be led somewhere, you know? Mm-hmm. Or just simply relax and just stop and let let him give to you in the way that he wants to give to you. You know, mm-hmm. um, you got to start there, and and eventually, of course, you can give more and more information about how you like to be given to and how uh, mm. you like it to be done. But you That's can't start there. Yeah. You have to start with just actually being able to see what you already get, um, be mm. grateful for that, and take it in. Uh, That's so 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 important mm. because. If you live your life as if he's not really necessary, he's going to feel that, you know, because it's very important for men because they have committed to making you happy. And we don't know that by being in a relationship with us, they have committed to making us happy. It's very important to them. If we don't allow them to do that, or if we express all the time that we're not happy, He's failing. Yeah. he's failing in one of his biggest missions. Mm-hmm. And that's taking a lot of power away from him. So in many ways, the most important thing we can do is to actually receive what we're getting and sh- show to him that it makes us happy. Mm-hmm. You know, If he manages to contribute to our happiness, mm-hmm. I think that's the most mm-hmm. important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So if we do too much complaining, too much bitching, too much mm-hmm. managing, yeah, it gets frustrated and yeah. Yeah, it takes away his his zest for life. He yeah. Doesn't feel like he's winning with you, you know. Mm-hmm. And and that's yeah, that's over yeah. time just teaching him not to give to you, you know. Mm-hmm. Basically, so if you have a man who doesn't give to you, think back: did he always was he always like that, or did he start out a different way? And mm. so he started out a different way and he's now not giving. And mm. it's probably because you have taught him not to give to you anymore by being too critical, by being too rejecting of his gifts, by, by you know, mm. priding yourself in doing everything yourself in your way and not listening. So, you know, it's not a lot, it's not a lot of fun to be around for someone who really wants to be your hero. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell us no. more about unconditional love? Unconditional. I just want to say one thing before we. Yeah, sure. This is really important, and that is that. I mean, what I'm talking about now, and I'm sure a lot of you recognize. Mm-hmm. Also, I'm doing that, or you know, I'm doing all the wrong things. Mm-hmm. I was in the same way, and I felt really bad about it mm-hmm. uh, when I realized. Um, but I'm really, um, it's really important for me that you don't go into self-blame hmm. because we, we've, we've never been taught this. We, we just didn't know this, you know? We hmm. don't know how men work. We don't know what, that, what we do to them, take so much of power away from them. And, and, you know, we just don't know. Hmm. And we do it out of sort of self-protection always uh, oh. or often. So, so just kind of, okay, it's okay to regret. Um, mm. but not to sort of stay there mm. and mm. feel bad about yourself, you know? It's like, okay, I did that, ouch, but now I can change, mm. I can do something different. That's a lesson. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so it's empowering instead of just, you know, more guilt yeah. on your shoulders. Mm. That's really important. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, unconditional love. Mm. I mean, I think that's, a, that's an interesting topic. Um, and for me, being on a spiritual path, I guess, for me, unconditional love is more like a state of mm-hmm. being uh, where I'm just really in my essence and I can take in other people's essence without really having any ideas about anything about them, just really just being very present, you know, being totally present with myself and with another being and there's love there's unconditional love in that interaction 
mm -hmm. that state. So that's basically uh, my interpretation of it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But on a sort of less yeah. spiritual level, I guess it's it's being able to love without having needing anything in particular back. Really, mm. you know, that you're just in a loving state, um, no matter what comes back to you. You don't have yeah. an order like I love you if you love me like that. You know. Mm. Yeah. But I think primarily it comes from actually really being at peace with yourself, being really, really present mm -hmm. and, um, and just being in that, that space, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it seems like it's connected to this idea of being open to exploring, to being curious and not expecting or projecting or being sure. Uh, mm. That's how we started, wasn't it? Like, mm -hmm. I know best, yeah. I, I know it all, this is all about the other. Mm. Mm. So it's really transcending the state, isn't it? Like just being like, what's there? And yeah, yeah, and living. yeah, yeah, and and to be like that with yourself as well. Mm. You know? mm. be, yeah, be so quiet within yourself that you just mm. what you are is revealed more than the ideas about who you are. Or, yeah, who you're not. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm where well, we should be those standards of perfection and ideal mm. idealism and yeah mm. exactly mm. yeah yeah to find find that peace within you you know find that security yeah. within you and, mm. and live from there mm. Mm. Oh, so cool mm. really cool um so the last question for you today yeah um so if you could go back in time and meet your younger self whatever mm -hmm. time or, uh, or age come, comes naturally to you, what sort of tips would you like to, to give your younger self? What do you think would have been helpful, helpful at the time? Hmm. Yeah, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I say, oh, hello, uh, 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 I'm from the future. It's all gonna work out. <laughs> Don't worry, you know. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, if I could have told myself uh, that there's absolutely nothing wrong with you uh, mm -hmm. and I could teach myself to to really be present, you know, to, to be connected to to the big divine, yeah. uh, that, would, that would be amazing. I think that would help me a lot, you know, but I'm not sure I, I would have been very open to that mm. as a teenager but but I think I would probably it would be very useful for me to know that uh, you don't need to be perfect nobody's going to love you more because you're perfect mm. you know oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah actually people love you when they know who you are mm. warts and all mm. you know and if you can love yourself the way you are as well you know, you don't, yeah, just accept, it's cute that you don't know everything, that you don't, you know, that you make mistakes, that you have some bad sides, that, you know, you're jealous mm. of times, whatever, it's just human. Mm. People are gonna love you more. The more you show yourself, mm. the more love you're actually gonna receive. And you're gonna experience that that conditions that you put on love for yourself will melt away. Mm. You know? mm. So I think probably for me as a young girl, that would have been the most helpful mm. thing implanted in her yeah mm. <laughs> beautiful i'm really convinced that the younger you would have been really really inspired about you know just the woman <laughs> that you are well, the message <laughs> yeah you are <laughs> definitely the message that's so true anna yeah you you mm. give something by by your by your very presence that's mm. uh, that's very very inspiring thank you so much mm. thank, thank you anna. thank you mm. So it's been a pleasure, an amazing episode. Thank yeah. you so much, Irania. You will have the mm. links to connect with Ellen Irania Seligman. Everything will be in the description below. Feminityfirst.com. So it's very easy to find. Feminityfirst.com. You have all the links for social media also to connect on the website. Subscribe to our channel before you go so that you get all the new episodes of The Empower Journey. And also, if you want to send us an email, just if you want to share anything, theempowerjourney at gmail.com. Feel free to email us. 
Thank you so much and see you soon for a new episode. Bye, Anna. Thank Bye, you. Anna. Bye, Aranya. Bye.